I want to draw your attention to the screen for a moment. Um, uh, first of all, if you notice, uh, the first line it says, learn how to give Bible studies. And Pastor John is leading out the GO team. The GO team every Sabbath afternoon. They left, uh, yes, I mean last week. And they're going to go out, they left to go out to the neighborhood and follow up the 60 plus Bible study guides. And they're going out again this afternoon. If you want to be part of that, contact Pastor John regarding this, okay? And remember, I'll meet right after lunch. Thank you. They're going to meet right after lunch. And also the small group. And look for a small group. Look in your bulletin. They meet at different times during the week. You need to be part of this. Be part of a small group. This is very important. Instead of just the worship, worship service and Sabbath school, be part of that. That's going to be crucial. Next week, something happens in March. That's my favorite month anyways. Uh, because of my birthday, but no, it's not because of my birthday alone, but March 5, starting at 9.30, we're going to be have a season of prayer right here. The church is really called the house of prayer. This is what Jesus called it, right? Amen. And so it's so important that God's people come together to pray right here. So 9.30, from 9.30 to 9.55, and then our Sabbath school has a new time. The time it starts at what time? 10 o'clock. That's not because of daylight savings time, okay? Because this will allow families with kids. So I know what it's like to have kids when trying to rush them to Sabbath school and church. So this gives you a little uh, extra time here. I didn't hear any amens from the parents. Yeah. Amen? But we're going to be starting this as a three-month trial. We'll see how that goes, okay? And so that means so that we bring your family to Sabbath school. The Sabbath school, ladies and gentlemen, is a very important part of your growth as, as a Christian. Not only from the sermon, but when you're able to interact with the Word of God. Our Sabbath school is from 10 o'clock and 10.50, and then we'll have our worship service. Uh, also, a special event starting in April is that um, marriage, uh, special marriage retreat. And again, you have to be married to attend this uh, retreat or engaged, all right? Amen? Amen? All right, good. I want to draw your attention for something that, again, I try to pull something about um, whether it's a world event or something that's happen happening in our nation. The one that grabbed my attention the most is this one. They're called the El Nusra, and according to this news, this is a new group. They said it's more dangerous than the ISIS. And I'm trying to get more data on this one, more information. This one, they said, this is, this is uh, actually, they're anticipating not only the, the, uh, this group here to create more terror than ISIS has done. Imagine that. Right now, ISIS has been getting the PR. I want you to know that this is what's telling us it doesn't have to be the ISIS or another group. The devil knows he's running out of time. And so he is trying to instill evil. He's, he's telling his demonic angels, go out all over the world and create terror, create chaos, create calamities. So this way, this way we can destroy as many people before Jesus comes. That's why our role is what we need to do as the people of God. He said, Lord, use us so we can be that vessel and instrument for your glory to help those who don't know Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Last week, Julie and I were not here because we, were, we had an opportunity to go to Oregon Conference to do a discipleship training. Well, we, they were very creative to get the PR to the people there. Take a look at this one. This is a restroom reader. You can't even get any privacy in the bathroom there. They were plastered all over the, the church. And, and so when we, when we gave the presentation, God bless in a mighty way there in the Oregon Conference, uh, the people that attended, uh, we made an appeal and literally there were, there were hundreds of people that came to the front and, and saying we want to commit all the way to Jesus. We want to be disciple and discipler for Jesus Christ. So we thank God. God is creating a new culture here and waking up his people, not just to be members, but to be an, taking an active role to his kingdom. I want you to know this is a sign that besides terror and evil going around the world, is also creating a new sense of, I call it, revival. Because the Holy Spirit is also being poured out upon the people of God. Amen? 
This is the big event. If we miss this event, we miss it all, right? This is what we need to do. What can we do? What can I do to, to pray for individuals, to pray and ask the Lord to use you as, to be an instrument to be able to prepare people for this kingdom? Pray with me. Father in heaven, I come at this point of time, Lord, in our worship service, needing the next portion, needing the baptism of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray you speak through this weak vessel of yours to be able to preach this message boldly and clearly for your glory. Give me your thoughts. Give me your words. I give you permission to change and move or deviate whatever you choose to do so, Lord, with this message. Make it practical. Let it be applicable for everyone here, young and old, so they can hear your voice. Thank you, dear Father. I pray to bind the evil one, cast him out. He is not welcome in here. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles or using your iPhone or tablets, I want you to hold up your Bibles and say the words together with me. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You believe it? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our message today is entitled Internal, Inter Intentional Pursuit, Extreme Faith, Part 2. Two weeks ago, when I last preached here, we talked about something that the Lord is doing, trying to create a new shift in the mindset and the hearts of people. He's calling people to wake up, to be involved in saying, Lord, use me now as your disciple. Use me now as your discipler. But in order for you to be a disciple of the Lord, it involves faith. Faith to step forward. Just for a quick recap, we talked about four things before we, we ended our service. Faith is believing when I don't see it. Amen. It takes faith, my friends. You don't have to see it. In fact, spiritually speaking, we will see it when we believe it, right? And so it takes faith. God is going to stretch your mind, stretch your, your, your faith in such a way. So don't go by I'm, going to, I'm not going to go forward until I see that taking place. No. Believe it, my friends. Next, number two, faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Things will not make sense when God calls you to do something for his mission. You go out and step out in faith. Amen? Yeah. You don't have to try to make sense out of that. Then faith is, is persisting when I don't feel like it. Many of you didn't feel like getting up this morning because this is the day you can relax, right? You don't have to go to work, but because of your commitment to Jesus Christ, your commitment to the Lord, you got up because you want to worship God, right? That's, you don't go by your feelings, you go by your commitment to Jesus Christ. Next, the number four, faith is announcing it in order to experience it. There were several things that we have to do. You, you announce the things that God has been working in your life to do it. We've been talking about last time how Abraham was told by God, you're going, you're, you're, your generations will be like the stars in the sky. Well, Abraham couldn't see that happening with his, uh, his wife. They're elderly, they're, they're up there in their age, but yet he believed. He believed in God. We talked about what will happen here in Nashville, what can happen here in this church. We talked about how God can use this church to be able to, through our platform of growing people, becoming disciples, talking about several people groups already. Even two weeks ago when we shared this, there was another group that's added to this place called the Ethiopian group. They said, Pastor, We'd like to be part of this church plant ministry that's going to be taking place of Nashville first. Amen? I said, praise the Lord. This is just the beginning. Are there others? And you're saying, well, how is that going to take place? This is when we step out in faith and obedience to the word of God, right? We, what else did we talk about? Our dream is to be able to plant one church in every city in greater Nashville. Our heavenly goal is to be able to say, Lord, can this take place? Can this happen? In 
Look at all these areas in the cities. We don't have a, a solid lighthouse that will reach out to the neighborhood, to the city. We want that to be established. We talked about a heavenly goal. What's that heavenly goal? One church in every 25,000 people. So can you imagine in Nashville alone, there could be at least 26 lighthouses. Some of you are saying, Pastor, what did you eat for breakfast, right? You're crazy. This is totally ridiculous, you know? Remember, take a look at this one. All of this can become lighthouses before the Lord. But yet, you have to announce it, right? To believe it. And that's what we're, I'm telling you at this point, to be able to believe what God will be doing in your life through all of us here as we come together. Now today, I want to transition. We slightly touched on this one last time about number five. There are four things, and now this is the fifth thing. Faith is giving when I don't have it. Faith is giving when I don't have it. Did you know that faith and generosity goes together? The more generous you become, the more faith will grow. And I'm challenging you to give more and be generously giving. Because giving and faith go together. And the number one thing God uses to test your faith is through your finances. Did you hear me, friends? I believe God uses finances as an acid test of your faith more than any other area in your life. You know why? Because you spend more time trying to earn money. You, you spend your energy. You, you, you think about how you're going to spend your money, what you're going to do with all the things that, uh, to take care of your finances, your bills. God says the number one test of your faith, my friends, will be in the area that you're mostly involved in. So faith is giving when I don't have it. You scratch your head and say, that doesn't make sense. Let me ask you this one. Have you ever been faced with a choice of paying a bill or giving your tithe and offerings to God? Have you? Amen. That's a temptation right there. That's a test. God is testing you, my friends. In Hebrews 11, it's interesting that the first person in God's hall of fame, we've been talking about Hebrews 11, God using several individuals that were tested in their faith. And the reason that chapter is given to encourage us, because if you become faithful in God and remain faithful in God, you also are part of that hall of fame. Right. Amen? Amen? And so this is what's happened. In Hebrews eleven four. 4, it says, it was faith that made Abel's offering to God a what kind of sacrifice? A better sacrifice than Cain's. Through his faith, God approved of his giving. Now you think about this, what did Abel do to get into the Hall of Fame? He just gave offerings. He just gave offerings, but not kind, any kind of offering, my friends, is an offering that was in obedience to the Word of God. Did you catch that, my friends? And there are two ways, two ways to give. You give by reason, and you give by revelation. What do we mind this? Giving by reason basically is this, friends is when I figure out how much money do I have in my pocket and what can I afford to give. So that's reasonable giving, right? And let me tell you this, it takes no faith, no faith to give by reason because unbelievers give by reason, right? You have $10 in your pocket? Oh, well, I see, I think I can afford to give that. It's based on reason, right? You, it's based at a reasonable amount. But the second thing where God is telling us, don't go by giving by reason, you give by revelation. Amen. Now, what do you mean by this? Giving by revelation basically is this, my friends. It's this, you pray and ask God, how much do you, Lord, want to give through me? Amen. Did you catch that? Amen. Let me flash it. Lord, you pray and ask God, how much do you want to give through me, you become that vessel, that instrument God will use to be able to give and, and advance his work. Amen. Right? Amen. I'm going to trust God that he's going to put a number in your mind and in my mind when you say, Lord, use me. Stretch my faith. When you start praying like that, God will put a number. And you say, Lord, are you crazy? I don't have that kind of money. Right? 
when you're talking about this way, you're limiting your God. Are you with me so far, friends? So you don't go by, say, Lord, how much money do we have? Therefore, we can give. Okay? And so we can go by that. It's going to stretch my faith. It's going to stretch your faith. Notice it's not the amount one gives, but how you give it. Right? It's your attitude. You give in faith. Most people give, you know, they give in fear and not in faith. I really hate to let this go, this money. I can't let it go in the offering plate, you know? Every time we're supposed to give until it hurts. But people, whenever they give, it hurts. You know, oh, I don't know. If I could do this, how am I going to pay my bills? Ladies and gentlemen, God is trying to take his people outside this realm that the rest of the world is at. He's going to try to take them where they're giving in faith. Amen? Amen. And here it is in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 and 3. Because of their great joy, they, have, they gave even more than they could, what? Afford. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing that God could do that. You're supposed to, my friends, exercise this kind of faith. There was a Christian finance, uh, a financier where they were saying, you know what, tell the people, those who are, are hard up financially, this is, you cannot afford not to give your tithes and offerings. Amen. In fact, this is a time you want to even give be faithful in your 10% of tithe. Be faithful in your offerings too. Because every time, my friends, I give, my heart grows bigger. Every time I give, I become more like Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is our great example, great example of giving. He gave everything to redeem you and me. He gave everything to make sure you have salvation. Right? Every time... Every time, my friends, we give, it breaks that grip of materialism, right? Because we're trying to save up for a certain thing in our, in, our, in our home. But God is saying, don't worry about that. Now, faith is giving when I don't have it, right? Now, let's go to number six. This is an interesting part, number six. Faith is thanking God before I receive it. Faith is thanking God before I receive it. Remember this passage in Hebrews 11, verse 30. It reads, um, you have your Bibles. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. Even though I'm going to be flashing on the screen, I want you to be able to open from the word of God, okay? Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30. Take a look at this here. By faith... The walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Right? Amen. By faith. Remember that story? Joshua. You know that story that's taking place. Joshua became the leader after the death of Moses. God tapped Joshua on the shoulder and said, You're the man I'm going to let lead the children of Israel to the promised land. Remember this promise. I want you to now flip your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. That's in the Old Testament. Joshua chapter 1. Take a look at this. Joshua chapter 1. Oh, this is very interesting. You need to see this from your Bible. Otherwise, you're going to miss this, okay? Verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Notice verse 3. Okay? This is exciting. Notice verse 3. I'm going to flash it all on the screen too. Every place, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon... I have given you as I said to Moses. Amen. Now, some of you say, say ooh, I didn't know if I, I, didn't, I didn't catch it. What, slow down. Take a look at this one. Every place that the sole of your foot will, that's future tense, right? Amen. Tread, I have given to you as I said to Moses. Now, that doesn't make sense. Proper English, friends, is this. Proper English says, 
the sole of your foot, every place on the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will give to you. That's proper English, right? Because the, the tents have to match. Well, what Jesus says, he doesn't go with proper English, he goes with God's English. He said, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given already. So, what is God saying? I've already given that to you. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you can imagine the children of Israel trying to process those words. Really? You've already given to us? What do we have to do? Right? What do we have to do? And so take a look at this one. I love it. How can, how can you have when you have not seen or experienced it yet? It's God's faith. It's faith in God, what he will be doing. Now keep in mind, Jericho is the most fortified city in the world. God tells them you can't take them by fighting it. To conquer not by skill or prowess, but by obedience to the word of God. To obedience to the direction given to them from God. Right? Instruction is march around that city once a day for six days. Thanking me. Thanking me. All I want you to do is thank me in advance as you're marching. Thanking me in advance. Amen. Did you catch that, friends? Amen. In Patriots and Prophets, I love this passage. Take a look. The Israelites had not gained the victory by their own power. The conquest had been holy. Whom? Whom? The Lord's. And as the first fruits of the land, the city with all that it contained was to be devoted as a sacrifice to God. Right? Take a look at this next page, next paragraph. It was to be impressed upon Israel that in the conquest of Canaan, they were not to fight for themselves. Amen. Not to fight for themselves. What happened to the children of Israel in the wilderness is a direct parallel to what will happen to the people of God in our own wilderness here. What is God saying? This is not your battle. It's my battle. God is saying to you, this is not your battle. It's my battle too. Amen. As a Christian, as a disciple, God is saying, your battle really is my battle. Amen. Right? Take a look at this. Not to fight for themselves, but simply as instruments to execute the will of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. As instruments. God is looking for instruments today. God is looking for instruments today to execute the will of God, not to seek for riches or self-exaltation, but for the glory of Jehovah, Amen. their King. Amen? Amen? How's your faith today? God is looking for people like you, whom he can use in a mighty way so you can give glory to him. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. It continues. It was to be impressed upon their minds that their strength was not in the wisdom of man, nor in his might, but only in the God of what? Of their salvation. In other words, my friends, what they're saying, what God told the children of Israel, lean on me, depend on me. I'm going to show myself powerful in your life through this nation. But you said, well, pastor, that's the Old Testament. Well, today... This is what God is promising in your life. Trust in me, okay? Trust in me. Let me be your wisdom. Let me be your might, right? And let me be your salvation, and I will take care of you, right? They're thus to become accustomed to relying what? Holy. That means all the way to God. Likewise, today, my friends, the problem is people do not rely totally on God. They'll say maybe they'll rely only a few percentage at a time, right? So, thanking God in advance. What was the instruction? On the seventh day, on the, seventh day the walls will fall down. The walls will fall down. But remember they gave the instructions to the children of Israel. By the way, I'm going to backtrack for a moment here. How many times did they go every day around the city? Once. You know why they did that? To test the faith of the people of God. Why? Because it doesn't 
fit logic to just walk around and march around, right? It doesn't make sense. They don't understand it. The key here, my friends, when God tells you to do something, whether it makes sense to you or not, you do what God tells you to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know if I'm going to march around. That's going to make me look silly and write silly. Why should I do it, Lord? Okay? See, common sense, that's right. It doesn't make sense. God's economy doesn't make sense to our earthly economy. We work in a different platform, my friends, right? And so people have the opportunity to exercise faith or doubt. Take a look. I love this part. Take a look at this one. Don't miss this one. God will do great things for those who what? Trust in him. You want to do great things? You need to trust in God. The reason why his professed people have no greater strength is that they trust so much on their own wisdom. They do not give the Lord an opportunity to reveal what? His power. The reason I'm taking time here, my friends, you have to realize this passage in Patriots and Prophets is powerful because here is the biggest problem. We don't allow God to work in a mighty way in our lives. Okay? Take a look. They trust so much to their own wisdom and do not give the Lord an opportunity to reveal his power in their behalf. He will help his believing children in every emergency. If they will place their entire, notice the word entire, confidence in him and faithfully obey him. I said, thank you, Jesus, right? Thank you so much for that. I said, thank you. Now, one of the things that I want you to know, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. They did not have anything to do with it except just obeyed and walked around. Right? Right? Just walked around. It was they obeyed the commands given by God in the name of the Lord, or they had an opportunity to deny his authority by not walking, right? What would you do? If you were supposed to walk around that city, I said, Lord, we want to see some action, you know? We want to be there to, 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 you know, to defeat the enemy. But God said, no, 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 no. The battle is mine. Amen. The battle is mine. It's not yours, okay? That, this is where, my friends, it fits here perfectly what we need to remember. Some of you are thinking, Pastor Santos, Why are you getting all these crazy ideas that we should be a disciple and disciple for Christ? Then on top of that, you're trying to convince us that we are all ministers before God? Right? Pastor, I'm happy that you be the pastor and we stay the members. Capish? You comprende, Pastor? My parents were members. My grandparents were members. As long as I can remember, we were all members and there was only one pastor. Then you came up with these wild ideas that we are to plant churches. You're nuts. In the islands, we call it your coconut. Your coconut. And listen, it doesn't make sense, Pastor. Some of you who speak like our Hispanic friends, you say, you're loco, Pastor. What's the matter with you? We like the old plan that the pastor is right here. We come and sit down and listen to you preach, Pastor. Then that way we can go home and enjoy the rest of our lives and the rest of our week. This is not God's design, my friends. What I'm trying to tell you, do you know why the army of Israel, we told you, were marching once a week? It's to develop their faith in God. Likewise, when we come every week, when we share and I share, when you hear the message that is challenging you, go out and be a disciple of the Lord. Go out and be a disciple for him. What God is doing is developing your faith to trust him. Right? Mark eleven twenty four 24 states, when you pray and ask for something, do what? Believe. Believe. 
then you have received it and you will be given for what you ask for. I said, amen. Believe it, right? Is that true? Amen. Where's my head elder? My head elder, you've been doing so much work. My it's head elder appreciation day. Amen. So I'm going to issue a check. Take a look at this one. Orville Bignall, one thousand dollars. Membership enhancement. <laughs> amen. Should I hear a louder amen? When I if I give you when I give you that check, the thousand dollar check. Dr. Bignall, Elder Bignall, would you wait until you cash it to thank me? No. no. You would thank me at once, but remember, you did not get the actual money yet. It's just a piece of paper. That's right? right? Yeah. It's just a piece of paper with writings all over it. But when you receive it, you looked at it. Thank you. Thank you, right? And so you're thankful for that. Now, let's go a little deeper. Now, by the way, you can put your name there, my, because I love you. I'm going to give you checks, right? But this is for this illustration is for Elder Bignall. Now, now what if I change that check? I said, you know what? I'm going to be a little bit generous, and I give you this check amount right here. Oh, that's oh, it went too fast. Instead of a thousand dollars, one million dollars. One million dollars. If I give that check to you, Elder Bignall, he said, whoa, pastor, thank you. But you will have a little doubt. <laughs> pastor Santos, I know how much you make. <laughs> you don't make that much. Even with Juliet's funding, we don't make that much. And so, you take that check, uh, I don't know, right? Is this for real? You, you pastor, uh, you know, you didn't win the lottery, did you? You didn't play that Powerball last few months ago? And so you know you will doubt it, even though I'm promising you, no, this is, this is a check for you, right? But if this check came from, oh, let me backtrack came from Bill Gates' foundation, right? Would that change your reception of the check? Of course. Why? Because we know Bill Gates is a billionaire. He can afford it. This is peanuts to him, right? Are you with me? Because you know the source, who the person is giving it, therefore you're willing to take it, right? Now, how many of you have ever flown before? Okay. Last, again, last week we just flew with, with Southwest. And, we, you know, when you get in the plane, you get into where you find your seat. That's one thing about Southwest. You have to, to make sure you, you, you check in fast. Otherwise, you could get a different zone seating. And it's open seating there. But let's say you got seated. You're comfortable. All the passengers in the plane. And the pilot goes on to the uh, intercom system. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to take off. But I'm, uh, we're go our destination is going to be Burbank, California. I'm going to try to fly this plane. <laughs> now, when you hear those words, what are you going to do? If you don't know how to fly this plane, this is the first time you're going to fly this plane, I'm getting out. Right? right? Yeah. Are you with me? You don't want to hear those words when you're in the plane. I'm going to try to fly this plane. Right? Now, when I come here to church, every time I come out just during the worship service, notice I would just normally sit on this chair comfortably. I don't check. I don't check to make sure that this is a stable chair. It's why you call blind faith, right? Because I know that's supposed to be sturdy. When I know that's a strong chair, I could just sit there and know that it's going to support my weight. It makes a huge difference, my friends, in what happens in your life and 
in, in who you're leaning upon and trusting, right? This child, have you ever played this? I, used, I love doing this with my kids who are young. I would take them and I'd throw them up in the air, right? And I'd catch them. And you know what they'd say? Do it again, Daddy. Do it again. I'd throw them up in the air and I'd catch them, right? That child going up in the air, can you imagine? That's pretty high. Sometimes up to you know, five, six feet, throwing them up in the air. Because, because they know every time they go down, daddy was there to catch them. That's why they can say, do it again. Do it again. Throw me in the air until I fall. <laughs> right? And you know what they say too? My kids will say, do it higher, dad. <laughs> right? Do you see? Because they know my kids know their father. The father will always catch them. They have a relationship with the father. Daddy will not let them down and say, okay, I'm going to see how they feel and let them fall down and get hurt. No. Our heavenly father will not do that to you. Though you may fall, he is always there to pick you up. Amen. Right? Amen. And God is always trying to do something here in your life to prepare you. My friends, the fact is, God is always testing our faith so we would learn to trust Him. Mark 9, 29, Jesus said, because of your faith, it will happen. Because of your faith, right? And by the way, this is not even the faith that you muster from yourself. This is the faith that God gives as a gift to you, Amen. right? Now, in number seven, number seven states this, faith is trusting God if I don't get it. Amen. Faith is trusting God if I don't get it. Amen. Remember, the fact is, God answers our prayers. He doesn't always answer it the way you want it. Sometimes he says yes, and sometimes he says no, and sometimes he says what? Wait, by the way, and that delay is not a denial. The mark of maturity is when a kid learns the difference between the no and the not yet. Are you with me? The sign of your maturity, when God says wait, it's not a denial. Not yet doesn't mean no. Living by faith doesn't exempt you from problems. Living the life of faith is not an exempt, it doesn't exempt you from problems. In fact, you probably will have more. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Faith is trusting if I don't get it on earth. I'm speaking for those who pray those prayers and they've been asking God. We're told in Hebrews 11, chapter 39, chapter 11, verse 39, and all these things, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Okay? And God, having provided something better for whom? For us, that they should not be, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Now, what is, that, is, what is that saying? Anybody, listen to this, friends, anybody can trust God when things are going great. Did you hear me? The greatest faith develops in the valleys of life. The greatest faith develops when things aren't going your way. It's easier to praise God when things are going good than to praise God when things are going bad. Right? And that is faith. It takes greater faith to praise God when things aren't going great. When things are going wrong in your day, sing a song to the Lord, keep praising God. Right? Praise God anyways. Let me tell you, my friends, I prayed the longest for intensely praying, continue to pray for. I have my, in my prayer journal, I keep praying for certain individuals. By the way, for several years that we've talked about prayer journals, and we have, we have totally, basically, a lot of new congregation here now. 
that, what, we said, Pastor, what are you talking about a prayer journal? We'll introduce that to you. But for the sake of those of you who know what I'm talking about, a prayer journal, I've been having, I have several names there. I continually to pray. I said, Lord, please, when are you going to answer this request? When are you going to answer this request? But faith is thanking God, even if I don't get it at that moment. Right? When God doesn't answer your request, my friends, you keep believing. Amen. You keep trusting him. Amen. Now, you think about this now. So, Pastor, you're talking about being a disciple. You're talking about church planning. The reason why I'm saying this to you is this. In order for us to go out, step out in faith, it is a step out in faith. Because you look at this, Pastor, we're not even packed to the capacity. You're trying to plant the idea that we need to plant churches. This is not my idea, is what I'm trying to tell you. It's in obedience to the word of God Amen. and the, the writings that were given here that we need to be fruitful Amen. and to multiply. Amen. If Adam and Eve was just, when God, after he created them, okay, guys, you can re enjoy the Garden of Eden for us forever, right? But you, but you can just spend it by yourselves. That's not the Garden of Eden. Okay, we're given an instruction, be fruitful and multiply. He said, well, God didn't, say, God didn't say that in the New Testament. Jesus did say, go and make disciples of all nations, right? So this is the words, these are the words that he gives to us we need to remember in the valleys that we will experience in life when we go out and step out in faith. This is what we're praying for. We're praying for and asking the Lord, said, Lord, who else? Who else will you call so that we can, we can prepare, equip, train, and send them out, Amen. right? We're stepping out in faith right now, right here. But in the valleys, when we are not sure what's happening, this is when we continue to step out and believe in faith in the Lord. Said, Lord, I will continue to march around Jericho. Amen. I will trust that you know what you're doing, right? Amen. That you know what you're doing. Does God know what he's doing? Amen. You better believe it. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you, my friends, today, don't go start counting what you have in your bank account. Don't say, well, I'm limited with my time. I'm limited with my resource. Don't go with that. God is saying, step out in faith. Give to me. You are low on time. Give that to me. You're low on finances. Give it to me. Amen. Right? Because what I give to you will be more than you can imagine what you will receive. I'm going to ask our ushers to, to take the uh, cards here. And uh, can we get several people to help pass that out? Um, let's say get at least six or seven more. And if Florence is here, I need you, Florence, here to come and join me in the front. I want you to know, my friends, I want God to work in a mighty way in your life. I want God to work in a mighty way in your marriage. I want God to work in a mighty way And what he wants to do in, your, in you as an individual. So let me ask you this. How do you rate yourself with the seven things? Number one, faith is believing when I don't see it. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Faith is persisting when I don't feel like it. Faith is announcing it in order to experience it. And we talk about faith is giving when I don't have it. Faith is thanking God before I receive it. Faith is trusting God when I don't get it. Okay? How do you build more faith, my friends? To build more faith, simply this. You need to be connected with God. Amen. Every day, spend that time. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? Hearing by what, friends? The Word of God. Your faith will increase. Start, number one, with the Word of God. Your faith will increase when you go and obey what God is telling you to do. Amen? Amen? I want you to move out in faith. Move out into the hall of fame of faith, asking God to cause us to do things that he's never done in our lives. 
even though it seems absurd. Take your card. It says here, Lord, help me to trust you completely in my life. Lord, help me to trust you completely in my life. Put a check there. Number two, I'm willing to be what Jesus wants me to be, to do what he wants me to do, to go where he wants me to go. Put a check there. You're asking God, you're giving him permission, permission to do his work of transformation through his Holy Spirit. Put a check there. By the way, this is not just words here. This, I, pray, I carefully prayed for these words here. I want God to use me to plant a church in my city, wherever you live. If this is something that God wants to do through you, then put a check there. I want to join a church plant team and receive training. And if that is you, then put a check. Okay? We need more people who want to be part of that, who wants to step out in faith. I am willing to pray for this ministry. I am willing to support this ministry financially. I love Jesus and desire to pray, prepare for Bible baptism or rebaptism. I just thank God for Rosanna being baptized today. Remember what we mentioned several weeks ago. Once a month, we will fill this baptismal tank here. God has called us to make sure we do our part. We step out in faith. Go pray for that seven name I asked you to do. Are you praying for the seven names? Pray for them. If you're not praying for them, how can God use you as that instrument, right? Well, I forgot about it, Pastor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most important thing besides uh, you to be praying for your family members, your relatives, and your friends, right? Pray for them. Be persistent with God. That's why I'm giving you this series of message of faith and hope, so that way, even before you see it, you're believing that God will touch the life of that, of that person, right? If you haven't been baptized, you've never given your life and committed your life in, in baptism, put a check there. But if you want to be rebaptized, then I'm going to ask you to, be, to make that decision to recommit your life to the Lord. What we hear is people are asking, why are we wanting to be rebaptized? My friends, whatever it takes at this point, so that way you are right with God. We don't know all the story in your journey, but God is so interested in your life. Will you put, make sure you put the mark here? Don't just toss this aside, this is very important. I want you to stand with me now as we sing that song. Let's sing that song, Greatest Thy Faithfulness, hymn 100. of us to trust him. I had selected this song in purpose here. Great is God's faithfulness to you Amen. each day. He wants to show himself powerful, but friends, the thing here is this. We're so afraid to trust God. We're so, we're holding back. Don't hold back, my friends. 
Trust them fully. Don't lean upon what your, your securities, you're trying to lean upon what you knew in the past or what you're comfortable in the present. God is going to take you out from your comfort zone, just like what he did to Abraham. God will take and move you to places like you haven't imagined. Are you willing to say, Lord, you are faithful, but help me now to take that step so I can be in line with you. Amen? Raise your hands up high. Fill this out. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much. Thank you for so much, dear Father, for your goodness, your love to each of us. And dear Father, we just can't imagine every day you're very faithful to us. You pour your mercies. We don't even deserve it, Lord. And we take you for granted. We neglect the, the things that you tell us to do. And dear Father, we want this to change. We want instead to be filled with your Holy Spirit in such a way that we can experience more, more increase of faith, more of the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. But all of this is for the purpose, dear Lord, that we can give you glory and honor. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to come together to worship you. As we leave this place of worship, I pray now, Lord, let your presence and your spirit be with us throughout this day till we meet again in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, amen. amen.